two, one, and we are back. Welcome back to Talk It Up, everybody. Today's guest, William Benjamin, back for number two. How you doing? Man, I'm great, baby. Thank you for having me, Will. I appreciate it. Of course. Is it weird that I introduce you as William Benjamin? Man, I love how that sounds. Because it sounds like uh, <laughs> like scholarly. Man, that's good, man. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I got a master's degree. I, I need to start acting scholarly. You are scholarly, man. but William is like, uh, did you ever get at, do you ever get asked? Like, is it Bill, Will? Yeah, man, growing up, it was, you know, my, my, my uncle was named Billy. My granddaddy's named Willie. My grandmother made sure I was named William. So whenever a teacher was like, Bill, I'm looking around like, who the hell are you talking? Isn't it weird when a teacher just guesses? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It says <laughs> William. Say Bill like, on the paper. Hey man, I'm not Bill, not Will, not Billy. I hated, Bill. I hated Bill. Bill for sure. That one was out. Even I as hated a kid. Bill. I hated all of them. Like, like <laughs> Willie, Willie was cool because that was my grandfather's name. Yeah. But the Bill, Billy, I didn't like that. I, I didn't, didn't like, like Bill at all. Um, I didn't like William either young. I was like, just go with Will. And then right. now that I got older, I like William way better. I'm like, damn it. Like Will's I, okay. I, I'm, I'm cool with Will, but, but my grandmother made it a point to make sure that I make sure. Sh- Make sure that everyone calls me William. Yeah. She made it a point to make my, sure I do That's that. how my grandmother is. She, right. uh, when uh, I think my wife now came over and she called me Will and she was like, his name is William. Exactly. His grandfather's name was William. Exactly. And we know him as William. And exactly. so when people call me William, they go, or they ask, can I call you William? You and my grandma would be the only two. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that, that's that old school, man. That's that old school. You got to honor the old school, man. No, man. I'm so glad to have you back on. Um, I'm, last time we had such a blast doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the feedback was good. People seem to enjoy it. So I'm so glad to get you back in here. Last time was preseason. You guys just finished up everything. We won't talk about basketball a whole lot. We might get into some NBA stuff, which we're watching in the background, by the way. Right. Uh, for right. those of you only listening. Um, but now that you have a bunch of free time, mm-hmm. not that you literally have free time. I know that. Uh, what do you plan on doing with it? Man, enjoying it. Uh, uh, reading. I plan on, I'm trying to. The get, lost art of reading. Man, I'm trying to get back into my books. I'm trying to get back into uh, playing a little bit of golf. Oh, um, that seems to be the uh, thing, too. I'm Have you always golfed? I used to, but then when, when the kids came, I mm-hmm. stopped. You know, when the kids came, I stopped. I didn't have the time. It's I, a tough hobby to have. It's not it's cheap. Tough. It's not cheap. It's not cheap, but it's, but you know what? For a hobby, it's not that expensive. It's not? It's not that expensive. I've never been. But. Depend, depending on how often you go. That's depending true. Depending on how often you go. Like, like I'm not, I'm not, it's like, like it's not like a hobby where you're going to go broke. You're like, because you know that you can't go, you can't afford it. Yes. Right? But, but it's a hobby where you can go two times a week and be cool. Yeah. You know, so. I always compare it to like uh, basketball, you can, which is the easiest one, right? Because you can right. just go, you can dribble around your house if you don't even have a hoop. Or you can go to a court down the street. So, so which is why I think basketball has grown so much in popularity, even compared to sports like football. It's a little right. bit harder to get a team together. Uh, but golf, man, that's got to be like a, a lot of my family golf, a lot of my friends golf. And so, and we mm-hmm. do a, we do a fantasy football draft. I don't know if you play fantasy football. At oh all. man, I'm on it. I'm on it, baby. I'm my, on it. I'm ready. I'm ready for the season already. I'm ready. You're already, I'm you're ready, scouting. man. I'm ready. Hey man, because you're playing these leagues, they cost money. Yeah. You know, it's real. We, uh, so my, my dad, uh, Daryl, the one that adopted me right. has had a fantasy football league since he was in high school and, wow. uh, okay. they still hang out. They, one is in Dallas, one's in Denver, one, they're all over the place. They come together every year to do a draft. We do it in either Rio Doso. This year is the 25th year in a row that they've done it. Oh, that's beautiful. So we're going to Denver for it. Oh, um, that's big time. And it's that's rowdy. It's, it's fun. It's everyone that left their wife and kids that's at home. Time. They're just trying to have a blast and they golf all of them. And I'm like one of maybe one other person that doesn't golf. And so I'm always telling myself, like, I gotta, I gotta but, learn. So when they go golf and do you go with them and just drive the cart? I did last year was the first year that I went drive the cart. other than that. I stayed back. I don't know why which, it was never fun. I would watch games or play a game right. or hang out, but these guys are all drinking golf and having fun. And so, so last year drive I went the cart and drink. I went and I didn't, they again were like, you should play. And I'm like, no, nah, I just hung out. I, I took score. That was fun. Okay. And then, you okay. know, you know what it motivated me to want to play though? A lot of these guys aren't good either. Like I started realizing right, that, like they're, right, they're just right, out there to drink right. and have fun. And so, so, I'm like, so, right. so what you think? They're out there shooting like yes, that was Nicholson <laughs> or something. Like like what are you thinking? What that's are you what thinking? I thought, man. They all had polos and like cool shorts, and they Dog, all that's the look. That's like that's like, that's like a kid coming in the gym and he got on the Air Jordans and the, and the shorts. Well, you and know the that because you're a coach. But if right. I'm a kid too, I go, damn, that guy must know how to ball. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he sucks. Hey, give me the kid that got the no brand shorts and the and goddamn canvas converse on and uh uh the shirt with the sleeves uh uh 
a cutout, man, and he's out there hooping. Give me that kid, man. Give do you remember? Uh, do you remember Kenny? He played for uh, Kenny Cru- Vela, uh, Valenzuela. That's the one. Kenny Valenzuela. Here's yes, a funny story, and I know he watches, so he might get a crack out of this story. Okay, okay. I met him when I was. Uh, I didn't even meet him. I saw him playing basketball when I was at Zia with Patrick. When we okay. pulled up to the Zia basketball courts because we we're always just trying to get some ball in. It's so, like I was like in seventh grade, and he looked older than me. I thought he was an eighth mm-hmm. grader. I didn't know he was already playing for Cruces. Right. And we saw him out there, and it was far away. Like where we pulled up in the the car. And I'm like, look at that guy. He was shooting where we normally shoot, even though there's courts everywhere, like okay. on that basketball court. Okay. And Patrick was like, I said, we play him. And I'm like, yeah, dude. He's like, but we got to pretend like we don't know what we're doing. And then we'll hustle him and we'll get some money out of this guy. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing anyways. He's playing at a park. You know what I mean? Right. And so, and uh, we see him and we're like, all right, we, we scoped him out a bit. We're like, all right, I think we're ready. And we got our bar and we started walking over there. And like, uh, as we were walking, we're like, man, this guy looks Guy looks pretty good, man. Like he's just like draining right. every single shot. We didn't even get to him. Like we got halfway there, and he was doing some turnaround. He was doing crazy stuff, right. and then he got bigger because when you're far away, like you think, like oh. And we walked, and he's not a big guy, but he's big right. to us, who was right. in seventh grade. And we're like, oh man. And we never even acknowledged him. We're all tough. We walked up as soon as we got close. Like you know what? He can have that cord, man. Like we'll right. just shoot over here. <laughs> right, right, so right. Yeah, Kenny's a, Kenny's a good dude. And then we saw him playing at Cruces. We're like, oh, thank God we didn't good play Good dude, he good high good. school dude. I had the opportunity to actually coach his brother. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 Older or younger? Younger brother, years. Uh, After. I, think it was, I want to say 2015, 2014, I believe. Um, I coached him. Uh, we went to the state tournament. And, uh, man, that was that was a... Uh, that was a cool experience. That was a cool experience. Kenny's good people. He actually lived like two houses down from me. His mom actually lived two houses down from me. So, it, hey, his mom cooks the, I, I can't say the inappropriate language. But his mom, <laughs> hey, we'll his, get it. His mom make the hell out of some wontons. Oh, really? Oh, my God. That's a, that's a unique a thing to make. That's not oh, like a normal thing. Exactly. And she would make them wontons and bring me some, and I'll be like, oh, my goodness. Did they have green chili in them? Man, I didn't give a damn about the chili. <laughs> hey, all I know is I put some hot sauce on them, and I was, was eating the hell out of them. Oh, they were delicious. They were delicious. Kenny's oh, man. good people. Kenny's mom was good people with me all day. If they're hearing this, <laughs> they can br- bring them some day. wontons. Get them. Exactly. Bring some wontons. <laughs> Kenny, talk to your mama. Tell her to bring me Coach Benjamin some goddamn wontons. <laughs> Damn show, sure. damn right. Damn yeah, right. that's uh, it's it's funny the uh, the amount of like uh, and I always appreciated it about myself. I was always like into. We talked about this a little bit earlier about uh, the willing to learn mm-hmm. and the the seeing. And I wasn't. I'm in college now, and uh, thank God it's summer, by the way, which means I can do a lot more podcasts. Right. But I have this weird thing about me where I'm like, uh, I, I don't know how to halfway do stuff, and so I will just lose my mind for school. And mm-hmm. then so when it's summer, I'm like losing my mind to do summery stuff. So I'm doing podcasts drinking a lot more than I normally do. I'm outdoors doing stuff. And I'll like, it'll be hard for me to reintegrate back into school. But then it, once again, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so I was going to the gym really hard. Like, and I got in such great shape, like January to like uh, March, I got married. <laughs> That's right. And so That's I was right. like, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And it was a blast by the way, but good. I was getting in good shape for that. We had the wedding, which is the, we were in Mexico for about a week. And then we, we went straight into our honeymoon, which was about another week, a little bit less. Cool. So it was about a week and a half to two weeks of just like a lot of alcohol, but also along with that comes really, really bad food choices. Right. And right. I rode that wave all the way. When I got back, I was like, I'll just work out when I get back. Hell no. I had the worst diet ever. <laughs> and one night when I, this is how I, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm back working out because my brother wanted to bulk up for the summer. So I have a reason to, and now I'm all about that. Okay. But in between during this time when I was losing my mind with eating bad, cause I was like, I'll just start working out on Monday. I got, I'm good. One day, me and uh, my wife go out, and I was like, uh, what do you want to eat? And she wanted to eat something different. And I'm like, you know what? Let's go get what I want, and then we'll go get what you want. And, like, we'll just have our, we'll just come home and eat it. And like, all right. We went to Wingstop, and I got some wings. And she's like, I want a pizza. So we went and got a pizza. And then we're leaving, and then I was like, you know what? I've been craving those those uh, crunch wraps from Taco Bell. I've been seeing the commercial a lot. Mm. And so I was like, you know, I'll just get a, a crunch wrap. And then I went there. I got a crunch wrap. And then they were like, would you like to try the new Fiesta burrito? I'm like, yeah, that sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. And I'll have that Mountain Dew Slurpee thing, too. And she goes, hey, you want to watch a movie while we're, like, in the line? I'm like, yeah, it's a great idea. We probably need, like, some snacks. Like, <laughs> right, right, then, right. So then we right. stop to the Walgreens that's right there, and we get, like, theater uh, popcorn that we can pop. We get Mike and Ike's and Skittles. Right. And then we got back, and I looked at all the crap that we had just got. We put it on the table, and I was, I just looked at it all. And I was like, this is dumb. Like, we wasted money. There's no way we right. can eat all this. I ate all of it, bro. 
that night. Of course you did. Every single bit of it. But you can't waste the money. It was it was that, but also like um, if you get like going all out for stuff, I was like, screw it, I'll, I'll work out on Monday, ate all of it, and woke up the next day feeling super guilty. Why? And then, well, because it's not good for you, man. But it was why? delicious. I felt guilty. Why you feel guilty though? Know, I'm trying bro. to figure I out did. why you feel guilty. Because there's a lot of food. No one should eat that much food. But you did. Yeah. So why did you feel guilty? Like like I could see if you don't eat it and you have it laid out on your table and was like and wasted look it. at look at what I did. Like, look at where my mind was at, you know, like, like That's I feel true. guilty for like See, you the, ate it. Like you this ate why, it. This is why I don't hang out with you, man. You're going to encourage but, me to but, eat bad but, for the rest I'm of my just, life. I'm, I'm not <laughs> encouraging you to eat bad food. I'm just saying you, you knew what you was doing when you was eating it. That's true. Right. This is so, a, so why feel bad about it? You already ate it. I felt super bad about it. It was but too much. You, I felt afterwards I regret it. You ever eat like a greasy hamburger at the end? You're like, I shouldn't have done that. You never feel that? Like. Like I don't. I should have had like a. See, I else. feel that you don't feel gross the, afterwards. Like, like I love the chalupas at Taco Bell. Oh, those are good. Too. I love the chalupa, and they always ask me, "Do I want the hot sauce?" I say, "No," because I want to take it home. And I want you got put, your own hot sauce. I want to put my Louisiana on it. I want to put the. Uh, I mean, you were a lot of like man. I like I collect hot sauce. I love that Louisiana. I love the Louisiana, but I feel bad pulling in the Taco Bell knowing what I'm about to. You know what I'm what saying? You, like, 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 I, like, like, I really feel bad. And I, on, on many occasions, I pulled the hell back out. Like, I like, left the drive through. I left. I, I left the drive through. Like, you're, like, you're like that guy. I'm that guy who pulls into the drive through. I'm like, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. And I go around. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I, I'm, I'm in the drive through, and right when I'm getting ready to go up to make my order, I pull out. And That's I, strength, man. And so I go home. And I go home. I'm not sure I can do that. I got to drink more water. Also, there's some drive throughs where you can't do that. What's your plan then if that ever happens to you? Name that drive through uh, uh, Carl's Jr. on Salon. I don't eat Carl's Jr. Well, if you ever go there, you're stuck there, by I the way. Don't, I don't eat Carl's Jr. I <laughs> there don't are Carl's some Jr. like that, though. I'm trying to think there of another. Are. There, Wendy's isn't like that. Wendy's isn't like yeah, that. Yeah, Wendy's, uh, Taco Bell isn't either. McDonald's isn't like that. There's some where you have no option but to go through the drive mm-hmm. Not in Las Cruces. Not not the one Not the one Carl's off of El Jr., Paseo. for sure. Uh, not the one off El Paseo. You, you, you can get out. You can get out of there. I don't think the so. The one across the street from Las Cruces High School, you can get out of there. I've got out of there many times. Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the Carl's Jr., though. The Carl, I, I don't. I don't eat Carl's Jr. I know. I'm just telling you in case you go there. Though I don't eat Carl's Jr. Well, thank God because you wouldn't going. be able to get I'm out of the going. line. You can get out. Of, you can get out of any. No, the Water Burger <laughs> off University. You can't get out of there. You can't get out of there. Once you're in. Once you're in the drive through at Water Burger, unless oh. there's someone not behind you, you you're stuck in that out. one too. You're stuck in. That there's one. been a few where you're stuck in it, but that's even besides the point. The fact that even you're able to like just bail. I'm. Just, Are I'm you just by saying. yourself when you bail? Doesn't matter. You'll bail if like your family's in the car and they're hungry. Hell yeah. He's just like, I'm, do you make him something at home? Uh, yeah, I'm paying for the <laughs> shit. Yeah, God damn it. Yeah, I'm paying for it. Look, if my family's going to, hey, if Deuce, Jade, or Zayana, I'm on a podcast, kid. <laughs> if any of you guys are going to pay for any one of my meals, I'm not bailing out of shit. I'm not. But if I'm paying for it, I got that option. But what if they're paying for it one day and then they bail and you want it? How they going to bail if I'm driving? What a, he's getting older now, man. Deuce is, gonna, is, hey, Deuce is driving my car. So picture this. You guys are driving. Right. You're in the drive-thru. You're, you're craving that chalupa. I, I'm in the passenger seat. Obvi- yeah. Or okay. maybe even the back if he's if he wants you there. Like it's a I'll, suburban or give something. Give me the back. Give All me right. the back. All right. Give me the back. And then you the you even tell him, I'll take a chalupa, da 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 whatever you right. want. And he goes, you know what? I'm good. And he drives away. How do you feel? That's my boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. You that's feel my like, boy. But I really want that's chalupa. That's my boy. That's my boy. But you had already ordered. There's something mentally about placing an order like you've already committed. Nah. Have you ever left after you ordered? Hell yeah. Really? Hell I, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, hey, when you go, look, fast food <laughs> is not, a, it, it's not a good meal. It's not. It's not. But all right, what does that say about you though? Because you went there knowing it's fast food. Yeah, but I went there knowing it's not a good meal because I'm full of shit. I'll like, g- like I'll g- I know that. I'll give you the strength aspect to do that. Right. That's, that's incredible. But it's right. still like the people that work there are going to hate you, by the way. They're like, no, no. Hey, you go to Walmart and University and you ask them about Coach Benjamin. They love me there. You're They're like a great. celebrity there? I, I wouldn't go as far as celebrity, but but hey, I get my coffee for free. I was going to say, you must I be doing it. something for them to know you, though. I, I, I come up in there and I, 
Shoot, I say good morning to everybody. It's uh, weird how that like really ma- means a lot, huh? Not it, weird, but it's it's astonishing how much something as nice as like good morning, how are you doing? Good like, morning. Someone's day. You, you know, it's because I have to drop. I drop my daughter off at Zia. Mm-hmm. We go and and before I go back to Cruces to go to work, I go buy Whataburger and I go and grab my coffee. Great people in there. Uh, uh, the manager is 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 amazing, and they all know me as coach. You know, and so I walk in. And the only time I, if, if I'm going to get a taquito or something like that, they might say, you know, I, I say, no, I'm going to order today. But other than that, I'll be like, you know, I'm just coming to get the coffee. They give me my cup. I get my coffee. I'm out. Uh, great people. Great people. But if I get in that drive through, I know what it is. Yeah. I know what it is. I know what it is. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting my two taquitos and I'm getting, <laughs> and I'm getting uh, maybe you might bail out after you order. No, nah, if it, hey, I don't bail out on taquitos. Oh, that's the I don't one bail thing. On the, hey, Where you do know, you get your taquitos from? Man, Whataburger. Hey, what? Name a better. Taquitos? What's a better burger than Whataburger? Oh, I got. I agree with you there. Whataburger is big time for sure. It, like, like, like people are sleeping on Whataburger. Yeah, like their burgers. I, I don't care if you get the with the green chili, with the bacon. That's the way to go. But I always get it, and I also add jalapenos on top of the green chili. See, I do the jalapenos too. People are sleep on Whataburger, dude. Like you can't name a better burger in Las Cruces. I don't Especially think. the West Coast people. They they're all West about West Coast uh, all talking about that in and out shit. In and out. There you go. They're all talking about the in and out shit. Yeah. I I, I take Whataburger over in and out. Now now I think now so too. now. God, Whataburger's fries are just absolutely terrible. Yeah, not a fry place. They're they're terrible. They do they're make terrible. a good if and I ninety percent of the time will get a green chili double, but um that uh chicken strip with the Texas toast, those are good. That's my. Oh, those, are good. So good. those are good. Those are good. Those are good. Yeah. Those are good. Those are good. Those are good. I'll give you that. I give you that. But people, people are sleeping on Waterberg. Yeah, they're sleeping on the Waterberg. They're sleeping on the Waterberg. I love how we just got lost into like a. Yeah, a, we just went a, straight fast food fast on the food. ass. Yeah. We, just went, <laughs> we just went straight fast food on the ass. That's cool though. The more of my right. story was how I felt guilty, and now we're talking about our favorite spot. Right, you should feel guilty. Hey, man, and. I pull out of there. Dude, if I feel, if if the guilt hits me that bad. I guess that's the moral, right? I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. And then I'll go home and make a sandwich. Because you're in good shape, man. You can't be. I'm not in good shape. I'm not in good How shape. How old are you, if man. you don't mind me asking? I'm, I'm a 52. I'm 52. You do not look 52. You're, no, thank you. I know. Thank you. I know 30-year-olds <laughs> that, hey, that hey. look at you and like that's their prime. That's like, their problem. <laughs> <laughs> they, that's their problem. All I know is I'm, you know. Sometimes, you, you you know, my kids, you know, so I'm not a good cook and my kids want to eat and they want to do the whole. I'm I'm I'm. I'm I'm really lost in this technology, I got to honestly say, because they do the door dash thing. Yes. Which, and I'm not and I'm not hip to that. Well, I'm not that's hip to that. even that's new to most people. I think COVID really brought that out. Like that was right. when that was right. the go to. I felt weird doing it. And they were doing, by the way, it's which is. I don't want to call it a scam, but they were doing all kinds of promotions during COVID to where it actually was like kind of cheap to do that. But right. now that it's over, they charge these fees, but people are already used to using it and they're just racking up money. See, and, and here's the problem. My daughter, Jade, my middle child, love her to death. And she's so highly intelligent and so absolutely amazingly creative. And so she figured out the promo codes. No, but she figured out my card number. <laughs> you well, know she saved saying? it in there exactly so she just, saved it in there so you're just going through your statements and then you just see like and she goes yeah i'm going through <laughs> dude were you there i'm going through my statements and i see doordash canes doordash denny's doordash whatever she is on it on it and i'm like what the hell you never on? caught one time someone coming to the door to deliver food i don't you know, like, I, like I, I leave people alone. Leave me alone. I leave you alone. And whatever you do, I'm hoping that we can come to a, to an, a, you know, to that medium, you know, that that spot where we're all cool. Fair I'm enough. leaving you alone. I'm not. I'm well, not. the downfall to that attitude is you got to pay for a lot of fast food from your daughter. No shit. <laughs> no shit. I, I, and, you know, it's not like nothing crazy, you know, but I'm, but I'm looking at my bank statements and I see. No, because if she's going to order food, I got a younger daughter and she's going to order for her. You can't order food for just yourself. So she does order for everyone else. Right. She's cool like that. You're such a parent, man. You're like seeing the best in it. I mean, at least she ordered for I her I see siblings. the best in it, but but no, but I call Jade out on that shit. I'm like, Jade, I'm looking at my bank card and like, what the hell's going on? I see, I see IHOP. I see Denny's. I see Cane's. I didn't go there. Like, what the hell's going on? Well, dad, you know, I ordered. I ordered DoorDash, you know, you didn't you didn't cook dinner. I said, I know I didn't cook Ooh, no dinner. Oh, you got guilted. Guilted my ass. There's bread. 
there's meat, there's cheese. So you didn't fall for it. There's cereal. There's hot dogs in there. There's ground beef. People don't know about that. There's grapes. There's fruit. There's a, hey man, that whole, that whole notion that there's nothing to eat. Dude. When you're young nowadays, you're not as creative. Like as we, you you for sure. Right. Right. My, my generation, dude, you, you ate a sandwich and you were happy. I made, (laughs) this is going to be a dumb story. (laughs) I made spaghetti one time out of uh, ketchup. And uh, old noodles. Like I found old noodles in the fridge. What's wrong with And that? I made ketchup and I put salt and pepper and then right. I mixed it up. I think I might have put like hot sauce. It was a hot sauce fan. Right. And I ate it and I was like, this is spaghetti. Hey, in, in my generation, <laughs> we called that a combination. Yeah. There you okay. Go. You had a combination. You had a combination of shit that you put together when there wasn't shit to eat. Which was right. most of the time. Well, it was most of the time. <laughs> right. Right. You, sometimes you just didn't have peanut butter and jelly. You just had no. peanut butter. Yep. Or you just had jelly. Sometimes you didn't you didn't have no meat and you just had mayonnaise. You made that shit work with some cheese. You right, 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 right. You found ways well, you to would make get it creative, work. and you would only rule things out when it was gross. Like that. Well, you're like, all right, that one's out. Like, right. but you just ate it anyways. Right, right. Anyways, <laughs> but next time, like. right, and then you started right, perfecting right. these recipes. But, but but what's crazy is you know you know, and I'm an old cat. Back then, eating out at a fast food place was actually a luxury. It, I remember it specifically being a luxury. Yeah. It blew my mind when I realized the kids I grew up with were getting like fast food on the regular. Cause I remember yeah. I, my mom worked at Wendy's one time and I don't even like mushrooms, but I remember there's a commercial about a bacon mushroom melt and it was like beautiful. <laughs> like I, I would get all lost in the commercial and I was like, mom, you think you can give me one of those? Like since you work there, she's like, if you act right, like this is my biological mom. So she wasn't, she was never going to give me one. But she right. was always like, if you do good this week, I'll get you one. And that was like my dream to like get one of these sandwiches. Right. And so I would do all kinds of stuff. And then my mom would be like, all right, I'm a little bit short on this check. But like, if it comes up, I'm like, mommy, you can't just ask your manager. Like, what are the chances I can get one of these sandwiches? And I was all about it. And then I, a year goes by and I never got one. And then I stayed at a friend's house and like, she just got them all for everyone. Right. And I was like, what? Right. Like, right. Did, she, did she get like a bonus or something? Like, is she, <laughs> right. I didn't get it. Right. They're like, right. And they were apologizing to me. For not cooking. It was so weird. They're like, I'm sorry. Like, we have right. to do fast food. And I'm like, what? Like, this is like my dream right now to eat right. this sandwich. I come from a generation of folks that cook. My grandmama was a hell of a cook. Hell of a cook. My mother was a hell of a cook. And and so when my mother didn't cook, my grandmother got pissed. So, like, we had a place, like, whether it was Burger King, there was a spot called Foster Freeze that we used to go to. Great burgers at Foster Freeze. Foster Freeze. Foster Freeze. Ooh. And they had all these Sundays, different kind of ice creams that you can get and stuff, but they had great burgers. And so when my mother wouldn't cook, we all lived on the same block. So when my mother wouldn't cook, we go to my grandmama's house and she was like, she was like, what you guys doing up here? And she was like, your mama didn't cook, huh? I was like, yeah, my mama didn't, you know, I, I ain't trying to rat her out, but she, was like, <laughs> but she already knew. She can read faces. Oh man, she read faces. She was like, well, sit down. I got something for you guys to eat or whatever. But my, or sometimes my mother would give us money to go to Foster Freeze to get dinner because she wouldn't cook. And uh, it was it was just it was just so it was more back in my generation. You just didn't people cooked. They cooked. They made you something to eat because it saved money. Like yeah. it's cheaper. Like it's cheaper to make a burger at home and a side, you know, whatever it is, meatloaf, potatoes, corn. You always had your vegetable, whether it was green beans, whether it was broccoli, whatever, peas, whatever. You always had that. And uh, this generation, and I'm at fault because I'm a parent, it's so much easier to just go pick up something at Little Caesars. But it's not cheaper. What? Because you're right. It is easier. What do you think is the difference? Like, why is it so? Because you're right. It is easier. The way that my story was easier to go get Wendy's than it was to cook. But yeah, it still didn't happen. But you're right. right. I, I right. see a lot of people eating out, which we're clearly still one of the more obese countries. So it's it's obviously an issue. I don't know. Maybe I mean I mean in my generation, people actually sat at the table and ate, and you know, and we actually conversated okay. about. I think you're how your something day out. went. How your day went? You know, how was school? How was you know work or whatever? Whatever, whatever was discussed at the table. There wasn't a TV like we're watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't a television. You know, we, we actually had some type of uh, dialogue, you know, to go along with dinner, you know. Um, uh, so this generation, you know, the, the days of sitting at the table is, 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 is very small. 
I mean, and how many families even really, actually sit at the table? And you eat can't dinner? even really make someone sit at the table either, huh? Did you ever right. try that with your kids? They, they I tried just, it. I tried it. I, you know, you you try and do it when they're when they're younger. Mm-hmm. You try and do it when you're younger, but then you get caught up in the fact that you have to work. You get caught up in the fact that you might come home late, and then you don't make it a priority. You know, when we, and 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 I'm not using having to work or anything like that as an excuse. Because when you make things a priority, it doesn't matter what you have to do. Yeah. You know, you know, so, so, so it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting because you, you learn a lot sitting at the dinner table for an hour, you know, or maybe 45 minutes, maybe at the most about somebody and what they went through in their day mm-hmm. and, and their thoughts and where they're coming from. You know, I don't know if we do that, but we're also talking about a, you know, I'm coming from the generation where we used to have phone landlines, you know, and the parents used to answer the phone so they knew who the hell you was talking. Or someone was on the Internet and so the line was wrapped up. I remember that. Man, I see, you're younger than me. I, we didn't have no Internet. We didn't have no Internet. We had a landline and, and, and Mama answered the phone and said, why the hell is this girl calling this late at night? Or who the hell is blah, blah, Oh, because they blah. could pick up the phone in the other room and, right. like, listen on sometimes. Right. Yeah. right. What do you mean sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean sometimes you know you know was sometimes you only had one phone and they answer the phone oh and it i got could you. be uh and it could be dion on the phone and she'd be hang on hang, hang on dion i'll go get william and then they put the phone down like this so they can't hear uh william who the hell is dion what the hell is she doing calling this late at night tell dion she can't be calling this late at night and sometimes you they can't hear by the way right, right. <laughs> and, 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 or sometimes it's they so act like they're doing that and they'd be like uh what's going on <laughs> right so so no, no, it's just, it's just a different generation, a different generation of what's going on, what's happening. But uh, I think it's important to mimic that in some way. Like you're right. Clearly it may not be dinner anymore, but to have like 20 to 30 minutes phones away and just like, let's all talk a little bit, which obviously isn't going to be a regular thing, but I think it's important because it teaches someone how to have eye contact mm-hmm. and how to hold conversations. Right. I do notice because I work with younger kids uh, and young, like high school, right out of high school, you're starting to see it a little bit more. Or you start you see it a little bit with right out of high school, but you see it a lot with the kids that are currently in high school, and you see it double time with the middle schoolers. But when I work with people like that, the eye contact is weird to me, and I get it. There's cultures like Native Americans where eye contact is considered rude, um, but for the longest time it was a sign of respect. And so it's like, it, but it's a social thing. I catch on it really quick. They're not being disrespectful. Right. They just literally don't know how to hold a conversation, right. and eye contact is very intimidating. And so they don't know how to do it. So I do get a little worried about that. There's got to be something we can do moving forward to at least instill that. Like, what is that? I don't know. I I know if you get creative enough, you can figure it out. My little brother, you brought up phones. My little brother, Caden, had an issue answering phones when we were a kid. And this is right Mm. when like cell phones were out, but it wasn't like they weren't smartphones. It was a flip phone. And uh, you still like the landline was the main thing. So a lot of people would call. And they wanted him to learn how to answer the phone. And he was so against it. He just like, he's like, what do I even say? We're like, well, let's start with hello. And right. he was like, why would I say that? And it was so, and my, uh, my dad would make him answer the phone every time anyone called. Right. Ding, ding, ding. Even if I'm the closest one. All right, come over here and answer it. That's just good. to get him used to it. That's but good. it did. So it helped him develop. And he's like, what do I say if they ask? Like, figure it out. Like, what do you, would you say if we weren't here? Let me ask you this one. What year was that? Oh, Jesus. So. I graduated in 08 and then he was in elementary. It must have been around that time. 07 to 09 somewhere. 07 to 09. Yeah. That. So now we're in 2022. Halfway to 23. Right. Yeah. Do you think kids answering the, a parent making their kids answering the, forget about that one. Do you think a parent making their kids feel uncomfortable? doing something is going on right now in 2022 no but it should i think you learn the most when you're uncomfortable in fact there you can clearly show how only giving a person specifically a kid but for sure people right. things that are comfortable with really just creates a comfortable bubble which is not what we're doing because the world isn't a comfortable bubble it's full of diverse people different cultures different languages different ways of life let me throw this one at you What's uncomfortable about a kid in the ninth grade through the twelfth grade right now? What un what what do they go through that's uncomfortable? You 
you want a real guess what I think they might? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hear it. Mm. And I could be wrong with all of these. I'm going to give a wild guess because I actually don't have even a relative in that age group. Um, my siblings are older now. Like, right, like college or older. Okay, just maybe. general kids. What are they going through? That's, that's difficult. That's, that's uncomfortable. That, that's uncomfortable. Not difficult, but what's uncomfortable? I can start with basic stuff by taking away the things they are comfortable with. I bet a kid would get very uncomfortable if you took their phone away. Who's taking away their phone? Some, not a lot. And, and, and it doesn't even matter if you take it away because they usually have another one or a computer or a tablet or a neighbor. Right. So you're right. You're right. You're right there. There's not an option. I'm trying to think of one. You got me. Can you think of one? No. That's why I'm asking you. Sports. I know that's important. No, nah, that's not important. That's not that important. I think trying to fit in is difficult. And I think sports is one of the last things where people actually pay attention and put in effort. Um, because mm-hmm. I care. Now we're talking I'm to saying, you now. We're no, talking to no, you. But we're I'm, I'm saying you. like if I'm a kid playing sports, I care about my team. If I'm that kid, I care about my teammates and my ability to relate to them. And we talked about this a little bit earlier in, uh, real quick, but I'm heavily influenced. Right. And so I naturally want the people around me to be okay with me, comfortable with me and have some sort of intellect there. I think sports is a dying breed when it comes to the ability for kids to socialize because mm-hmm. it's so important. People always think sports is just a thing that the movies always make it like the, the jockey kid, That's like the football player that's an asshole and is a dickhead to girls. And that's how they get like portrayed in movies. When's the last time you saw a movie where the sports guy is like a decent human being? It's pretty rare unless it's a sports movie. Right. They always get portrayed as the bad guy or bad girl in a lot of times. But I think that sports is one of the last things that we have that really, really does. I cared and I think kids would care now um, about being okay with my teammates especially if i'm spending a lot of time with them if i'm on a bus going to a different city if i'm in a locker room with them if i'm changing clothes with this person in the locker room like they're gonna joke with me i'm a joke and there's gonna be some sense of camaraderie there right. we're on right. the court and i get pushed down by the opposite team and they help but, me up but, that matters but what's but what is uncomfortable who's making anybody uncomfortable right now not really anyone in that even in the case that i gave you it would be the person themselves right challenging themselves to be in an uncomfortable situation. So is it, so it's a, it's a tough gig right now when you're talking about like, you got to take away a, just the thought of taking away somebody's cell phone and that making them uncomfortable or upset or, or distraught, or I don't think I can function mm-hmm. like just the whole concept of that. So what I just jacked up. Let me flip it on you real quick. If you okay. don't mind. Okay. Bring it, big, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, Will. And you can you can uh, answer any way that you want. I'm with you, Will. I'm you, with you. You have a son that is now going to be a collegiate basketball player. Yes, sir. And you don't get to do stuff like that on talent alone. We talked about that earlier. It's combined with who you are as a person and the mm-hmm. decisions you make. So I'll flip it on you real quick. What what worked for you or didn't work for you? Or what do you think would work to be able to challenge a kid mm. enough to keep that same mindset, but understanding I'm not really going to get to take away their, their social media Ooh, or their phone. Will, that's a great question. You know what? I can honestly say that I went out of my way to try and make it uncomfortable for my son. Like in other ways? Yeah, in every way. Can you give me an example that you're comfortable talking about? Example. I tried to make sure that he played against better players. Okay. Whether it's, okay, so going into his eighth grade year um a good friend of mine named coach smith mike smith he was the head coach at hobbs high school um i took deuce to hobbs and i dropped him off with mike said you got it and i left him there for hobbs summer league in june for i think two weeks two weeks you got him so deuce is in a whole new environment he had to sink or swim he had to sink or swim I'm not there. I came back home. I came back to Las Cruces. I left him there for two weeks. And he was uncomfortable that first day. Very Mike called me. He said, hey, you know, you had kids trying to fight him. You know, kids talking shit. You know, he was very, very uncomfortable. He had to figure that shit out. I left him there, and he, he figured that shit out, and he ended up killing. He ended up killing. He figured that shit out. He figured that shit out. We would go to we would go to L.A. every summer, and I would take him to the park, uh, uh, 
my best friend, uh, JB, uh, JB Nice, uh, J- Jason Bose. Uh, family lives right there next to a park, Van Ness Park. I take Deuce and drop his ass off. And we're talking, we're talking 99% African American. And Deuce had to figure that shit out. I drop his ass off and I'm not looking over, seeing what the fuck's going on. Uh, uh, drop his ass off. I go back home to JB's house. You know, uh, and, and and I took my daughters there too because they had a great, great uh, community gathering as far as uh, African Americans and my kids being able to see people that looked like them, and it was a great experience. But I had to drop them off and let them experience it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so they were uncomfortable, and they learned to get comfortable. You know, so. Those are those are two great examples. And the last example, what do you think they were uncomfortable with? They were that they overcame. Would you say the majority? Because some people that are listening aren't even from New Mexico. Right. Would you say the majority of the people they're used to are Hispanic or white? Of, of course. Okay. Being in Las Cruces, of course. Yeah. We're we're in a community that's over seventy percent Hispanic. So it was their first time being around a predominantly black. No, it, w- it wasn't. It wasn't because we go back every year. It was their first time being comfortable. Being comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. so because we're, because when we go back in the summer, now they're seeing, when we go back to LA in the summer, they're seeing, they're in a community that's predominantly them. And so that's a, that's a comfort level. That's a mm. comfort level. It's not, it's not so much um, because if, if we went back to a community in LA that was predominantly Hispanic, you still would have to be comfortable around being that, being in that environment. Sure. You know yeah. What I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it was it was an experience. Now you're seeing people that look like you, and you have to have a level of a level of comfort because you don't see that when you're in Las Cruces. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So so it was it, it so it's beautiful. And, and 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 I made it a point every year that we go back. We actually we, we would go back two two times uh, throughout the course of the year. Um, and so but the comfort level doesn't come from me making you feel comfortable. It comes from you experiencing what's going on in that environment and you feeling comfortable about yourself. What about money wise? Like that's the thing that I struggle with and and I'm not a parent yet, but I always wonder that like, do you give them the things you didn't have? Do you give them an opportunity to earn the things you didn't have? And how much, how much do you spoil your kid and how much of it is literally spoiling your kid? I think as a parent, I mean, we always talk about money and and you always want to spoil your kid and give them the things that you don't have. But I also think that sometimes when you give them the things that you don't have, you 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 don't allow them to experience the things that they need to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like you can give them everything, everything, everything. But now what are they learning? Mm-hmm. You don't learn shit when you give when you get everything that you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you learning that sometimes you don't get everything that you want? when you give them everything that they want, you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it's a, it's a tricky slope. Like we can put the money into the, yeah, you need money to raise a family and blah, 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 and all that stuff. But a lot of greatness has come from people that came from poor environments. A lot of, a lot of greatness has come from people that don't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, I think, you know, but we want to give them instead of giving them, um, what you haven't had, maybe we should give them what we what we didn't learn, you know. Mm. And and um, what a great way of of looking you know. at it. Because I always struggle with that because I'm like I'm not doing the greatest in life, but I'm doing way better than I was raised in. And so I always think like exactly what you said. Having nothing made me who I am. Like I remember literally sleeping in bushes when I was a kid. I remember trying mm. as a kid trying to figure out how to help my adult mother find a meal. And, right. and it's not a fun story and it's not a great thing, but it definitely gave me a work ethic. Right. It gave me a, hum- right. uh, being able to be humble, you know, a sense of humility. So you know what it is. So but, if you, when you have kids and, and you have your seed and boy, girl, whatever, you know what it is. Yeah. But there's also a part of it. It's like, can you only get that from experiencing it? Or can it be like, do can they you hear only get you? what? Can you only get what? That sense of feeling of like, how do you teach someone what it's like to have nothing without literally putting them in a position to have nothing. I don't think you have to, you, I don't think you have to teach them that, or I don't think you have to put them in that position because you already know what it is. So what better? So how do you, how do you pass it along? I guess 
You don't. You don't have to. Do when, the, think- when the situation arises to where they want something that you know they shouldn't have. It's words enough, though. Like, uh, and again, you're the expert on this. Can you right. think of a time where, like, he brought up something? You don't have to give the exact example, but maybe go there in your head. He brought up something, and you're like, oh, if you only knew what I went through. You're talking how, about Deuce? Yeah. Shit, how, every day. How would I get him to understand this without literally putting him in that position? Hey, every day. Look, shit, just today. Perfect example, just today. You know, Deuce, Deuce uh, you know, he has a scholarship to New Mexico State. He wants to go up there, and they're getting ready to play. He wants to take my car. I'm at Las Cruces High School. He wants to take my car. Man, I went in. And I had to check myself. I went in, dude, there's a time where, you know, where folks walked to where they had to get to. There's a time where, where motherfuckers caught the bus <laughs> yeah. to where they had to get to. And I'm giving you my car. Like, dude, I, I'm trusting you with a $30,000 vehicle. Like, motherfucker. <laughs> like, 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 you dude. You gave him the car, didn't you? I gave him the car. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Hey, man, I gave him the car, but I had to let him know that, dude, I didn't have no motherfucking car to get to, to UCLA. But do you I, think he understands that because you gave no, him the car? He, no, he doesn't so understand it. You're, you're spot on to work. We're on the same exact page. And how do you get them to understand without literally? You don't. Because he needs to get there. He needs a car. He doesn't understand it. He won't understand it until maybe he's he's older. Right. But I'm just trying to drop knowledge on him to let him know that mm. this thing isn't given to anybody. What I'm doing, I'm trusting you with my vehicle to go where it is that you're supposed to go. It doesn't mean that you're above anybody. It doesn't mean you're below anybody. I'm trusting you with my motherfucking vehicle. And I, I bet he knows that already. I, I think that I always think. I'm trying to find the best way to say this without taking it to a darker place. If you ever lost anyone in your life, <laughs> man. Okay. Yeah. Rhetorical. I, I bet you could have, but I, yes. So I lost a lot of people as well. And the most common thing people do when they lose someone is, um, what could I have done differently? Right. There's a stage right. where that it's like guilt, that guilt stage. First, guilt it's like, stage. what could I have done? And then you try to understand them. And then mm-hmm. you go, I, I would have said and done this. So you go through all that. And then sometimes it's family. When it's a friend, it's different. Sometimes it's family. Sometimes it's like a really close friend that is family. Mm-hmm. And either way, there's this thing that happens where you really see someone's value when they pass away. Right. And whatever that is, I think it's beautiful. And, and I always think back, and I've lost a lot of friends, lost a few recently, and I, I remember them and I go, ah, they, they had these faults. They had these parts of them that weren't great. Mm-hmm. Why do I only remember the good parts of them when they pass? Not because I want to remember the bad ones, right. but it, me being analytical and breaking things down, I'm like, there's this weird aura that people live leave behind when they pass away where we remember the good stuff. How do we capture that while they're still alive? And I never want to be the guy because I hope that through the podcast, through being a parent one day, through being a good sibling to my, my uh, brothers and sisters now, through being a good husband uh, to my wife, I always think, how do I leave them that kind of impact without dying? Like how could I make that same impact while still being alive? And so I think of moments like that. How do you teach someone without putting them in that position? I, I don't know. I like to think that you, you just kind of exactly what you said, like you, you're always going to take care of people, but then giving them a little note or a little side thing about like, this is what it means to me. Mm-hmm. I like to think as people mature, they'll figure it out. But honestly, I don't know. I'm 32. Like I don't have yeah. this figured out. I'm only guessing, but I do know I'd really, really want or would like to capture that feeling of being impactful while still alive. Like, I, I don't but know. But you are part. impactful. Like, like I just had a, my, my best friend, JB, my, my best friend, JB, his pops just passed. And they had their ceremony on Facebook and, and, um, because, uh, his, his, his pops lived in Canada, but he had his family in LA. And so they captured the whole celebration of his passing on, on, um, on social media, you know, on, on, uh, on the, um, it's like a zoom or like on the zoom on the zoom. Mm-hmm. So, so there was like a hundred people on the zoom and, and I'm one of them. And when I tell you, they captured uh, uh, the beauty, like the, like I learned so much through watching that, and it was and it was like a like a three hour ceremony of people sharing sharing their thoughts about his father, uh, the experiences they had with his father, but most importantly, they captured who his father was. They captured every segment I felt of his life from his early childhood from his, uh, from coming an adult 
from him becoming, um, uh, you know, a grown ass adult. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To him becoming older uh, to his passing and everything that he contributed to this world, to this life, to his friends, to his family. It was, it was an amazing thing to see. Uh, to answer your question, it doesn't stop. Like you're 32 years old, it doesn't stop. You're contributing. Like you're, you're contributing. What I saw from, from that thing, and like there was 100 people, there was 100 people on that, and, and everyone started sharing their experience with this individual and, and sharing their thoughts, sharing how they made them, how he made them feel at a certain time. And it was, it was amazing for me, you know, I'm supporting my guy. I ain't mm-hmm. saying nothing. Like I, like I met his father and, and I didn't feel comfortable. I felt comfortable sharing my thoughts, but I wanted to listen to what everyone else was sharing. And it was amazing to me to hear how he impacted everybody's lives. And that was so, um, that was so important for me to hear and and I learned so much from that that dude what you're doing is huge it's no. huge so it's so huge. everything that and I'm glad that you said that by the way and you did a way better job than I did by the way of capturing the essence of of what a, mm-hmm. a funeral is like right and we never want to I'm not glorifying that it's a but, celebration it's a celebration but I'm giving you credit for doing that because that's that's a great way that's how I feel at funerals by the way I don't think everyone feels that way at funerals um, so I, that shows a lot about your character yeah. and it shows that it's a good friend, but I feel that way. Um, my question was, how, is there a way to capture something, that same feeling that, tell me you didn't sit around and remember him that way when he was alive. You didn't. Cause naturally you have no reason right. to do that. So you're saying, can you capture that being alive? Yes. Like do we, do what we, I took from that is well, man, acknowledge everybody that you know and how you feel about right now while they're here. So almost like a treat someone. And I'm not saying, eccentrically but going back to the walmart people who love you at walmart Mm -hmm. maybe like if it's your last day how would you be or if everyone you you met talking about whataburger man well you said you said walmart first whataburger i thought did i say that's where i get my free coffee baby oh jesus i said walmart you said walmart what water is a water Water? It's Whataburger. Water. Like Whataburger. Like Whataburger. That's Whataburger. Right. Whataburger. Water. Like it's I a karate. Water. Water. Hey, man, I don't, I don't know the <laughs> I think accent. I, I, think I, I used to call too. it Whataburger all the time. Whataburger. Whataburger. But those people, though, that remember right. you that way, that's right. what, That's exactly what I was getting at. It was just being able right. to, maybe if you, you went through the entire day tomorrow with everyone you met, mm-hmm. pretend it's their last day, wouldn't you be super nice to everyone? Man, you, you know what? Yes, I would. If I knew, yeah, but shouldn't we be like that anyway? We should be close. I think we should try it for a day and then see how it feels. Cause I bet, I bet we yeah, go to bed but, better at the end of the night. I bet yeah, we feel but more at, accomplished. At the end of the day, like, like you said, you're 32 years old. You know, if somebody just like giving you some bullshit and, and you're like, you know what? But how many times in your life have you given someone else bullshit? And every now and then you get someone that just honestly is happy anyways. Honestly, I don't give nobody no bullshit. I don't, I, though? I, no, I think no, I've, I'm, I think, I'm past that stage. I'm past that stage. Like, I, like I don't go out of my way. To just give somebody like, I don't, like if you cut me off, you take my parking spot. Yeah. Like, 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 you know, that's some bullshit. Like, I don't <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got no time for that. Like, I don't like, like, I don't want to be, you know, like road rage is a big one, by the way. I'm glad they brought that right. up. Right. Like, like somebody cut like we're in Las Cruces. And you got motherfuckers driving like we're in L.A. Like everything's 15 minutes. away. But also, if you live in L.A., you take two seconds to be mad and you move on. But for whatever reason, right. people here like it will literally ruin their day. Right. And like, so, like I'm not I'm not tripping like that. Like, like, honestly, I can say I haven't given anybody. I haven't given anybody no bullshit for like probably the past 15, 20 years. Like, I can honestly say that. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, I'm cool with that. I'm trying if somebody to think, can go out of their way to say, well, I gave you some just like some real bullshit. Tell me. I guess it depends on what your definition of bullshit is. What like is it, it? I don't know. I, I'm thinking of it more as like basic human decency, which I get there's a purpose to that, but like the whole, like, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. Okay. Bye. Like, yeah. like I'm saying, which is good. That's, that's human When's decency, the last right? time you went out of your way to just give somebody some bullshit. But what if not intentionally, I'm pretty sure there's a time. Like I bet people listening, when? like I remember, I, I don't know, but I'm sure I did. Like, I just know me. I, I bet, I bet like at some point but I got, you initiated where you went out of your way. Not like, like aggra- I'm not an aggressive guy, but maybe I, maybe I, uh, I was offended. 
I'm very hard to offend. So as I'm thinking about it out loud, like, I don't know. Right. I bet I have, though, if I had to guess. If you have to guess and you don't know, that means you don't do this shit. Good point. But I do care about people's days. And so when I do see people, regardless if I know them or not, I'm always smiling and I'm always like, how's it going? Even when I go to like pick quicks or like, or yeah. they're all circle K's now, by the way. I didn't, they, they bought them off. They bought we, them. We they know bought them out. They bought them out. They the, bought them out. The New Mexico people know what I mean when I say that. Right. Right. I, when I go in there, literally it's always, uh, almost always, I want to say always, it's just some younger kid who hates his job. And I'll walk in there and I'm, they're like, is this all for you? Yeah, man. How's your day going? And you'll see it. Like they go, good, man. Like how's yours? Like it changes it like real quick. Not always. Sometimes there's an I can asshole. honestly say I don't do that. I do that. I don't. How I dare don't. you? How I don't. Dare you? Hey, look, I don't walk into a place just fucking smiling. No, I'm I not saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't You're do that shit. You're making me out to be some weirdo. No, I'm not, not saying. I'm not <laughs> saying. Hey, look, I don't go out of my way. I don't go out of my way to greet your ass either. But try once to do it and you'll be surprised. Not that you owe it to them. Do it no, for but, you. But there's some people like, look, when I go into my Whataburger, Whataburger. Water burger. What a water? Hey, water burger. When I go into like my star, water burger star on Wars university, <laughs> look, I give them, I give them the greeting because those are my people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's somebody when I go into my Circle K off of uh Sonoma or wherever I get off to before I go home, and I go in there, I, those are my people. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to be the same with everybody. No, I'm not saying the same. Have you ever been to Starbucks? Tell me those guys are out of their mind super happy. They're too happy. They're too happy? They're too happy. I like it. Why? It just makes my day. Because sometimes I show up there all weird. But they don't even know you. That's the point. You're not supposed to be that happy with people you don't know. You're supposed to be cordial. It is a little over the top happy, but I enjoy it. What do you mean a little? I'm just saying. If you had to choose with someone that's over the top happy or over the top sad, what would you go with? No one's over the top sad when yes. you go to a fast food or a Starbucks or a Circle K or a Whataburger. No one's over the top Someone sad. Is. Some people are. Who? I've had some servers that are just like. Get out of here. Yes, no way. That Where? Are. Where? What Ooh. place? Give me a restaurant. Because then they're going to listen to this and I'm going to well, go. I don't give a shit if they live. Give me a restaurant where you went in and there was just like. Welcome to Whataburger, man. Take that's like a, that, no one does that that's shit. A, no one does that shit. Who does a, that shit? That's exaggerated, depressed. But there's but some, that's what you just said. You said over the top happy or over the top sad. All right, then maybe. All right, so you're saying the people at Starbucks are way too happy. I'm not. I, so you want you like a said ba- that? I didn't say that. You want a basic happy? Like a, no? I'm going? saying that shit is weird to me. With hey, welcome to Starbucks. Damn, I just walked in. You don't know me. You don't know my name. And then they ask your name. They take your order. William, your, uh, your, your Carmel Macchino is open, is ready. Like, like, dude, your, your Carmel Macchino, huh? whatever it's called. Mac- <laughs> Macchiato, <laughs> Macchiato, whatever it's called. I do exactly what you mean. You do what I mean. Yeah. Like, like that's over the top for me. Like you don't even know me. I'm just saying I enjoy no. some, I enjoy some happiness, even if I didn't earn it. Okay. You have a son. All right. Okay. He's 15 years old. Okay. He's coming to play at Las Cruces Bulldogs uh, basketball camp. Okay. I'm with you. And he comes in. You're getting ready to register him for camp. I'm the parent. You're the parent. Okay. You walk in. Hey, Will, how you doing? That's great. Is that your little boy there? Hey, little fella, how you doing there? Hey, welcome to Las Cruces High that, School. That. You're going to have a great time here at this camp. Hey, my guy. Was, hey, Marco. Come take care of them. No, We're no. going to have a great time at this camp. Thank you for coming. I guess context matters because that's, that's not what I would want in my coach. Thank but, you. But that is what I want in my barista. I don't want that. <laughs> hey, if I go into Starbucks and I'm getting a sausage whatever with egg and I'm getting a, a caramel macchiato, I don't need you to be over the top. Just give me my shit. I hope your next Starbucks employee is like an asshole to you. I just want to throw that out there. It's impossible. And they the, can't do that. Not they can't to. do it's that. Like, it's hey, at what? Whataburger, they could be assholes. <laughs> hey, I had an asshole at Whataburger and I thought that shit was cool. Like, I thought that shit was cool. It was a young kid. It was a young kid. They didn't have the coffee ready. I was like, hey, dude, it's been like five minutes. I've been waiting for my coffee. Did he like bark back? He like barked back. I was like, hey, I laughed. I was like, hey, dude, don't worry. I ain't going nowhere, man. Don't trip. <laughs> Let me know when it's done. Let me know when it's done. I'm not tripping. At Starbucks, no one's being an asshole at Starbucks. All right. No one's being an asshole. That's true. I don't think they're allowed. I, no, no, they're not. No, they're not. They screen for that shit in the interviews. Hey, no one... No one's being an asshole at Starbucks. I'm just saying I appreciate it. I don't. Gonna, I don't. 
I don't. We're going to have to agree to disagree on this one. Okay, we'll disagree. I want my Starbucks with a little bit of extra joy. Okay. Remember that when you, when you have your son and he's going <laughs> and, he, and he's going don't, to don't, a camp. But don't compare it to the basketball game. Because I would not Why want not? that my coach. I wouldn't. Why not? Because it's weird. I'm dropping my What's kid off and you're excited What's weird to see about him. it? What's weird everything, about it? Everything. Everything. What's weird about it? To be overly excited in any other scenario is a little weird. But it's cool to be overly excited about a goddamn cup of coffee. Yes, especially when you're behind a counter or behind a desk or what behind about, a window. What about, hey, I went to El Paso. There's no, there's no threat. The I coach went, could be a weirdo. That's, that's just weird. like like that's overly. <laughs> I, went to, I went to El Paso and right. I went to Dunkin' Donuts. And okay. those people were assholes and I was cool with it. I was cool with it. I feel it. like we're sparking a debate right I now. I was cool with it. They, I went to Dunkin' Donuts. I ordered my coffee and I hate Dunkin' Donuts. I and they went hate there you. anyway. <laughs> I, I hate them too, but I was cool with it. They were assholes in there. They were their tone. So you their, respected their like tone, the demeanor? Hey, their tone, <laughs> their mannerisms were all assholes, but I was cool with You're it. about it? I was I, cool with it. I was cool with it. But how do you know? So you just don't care at all? I care, but, but I understand. So give Look. me, give me it. Cause clearly in that scenario, you appreciated it, which I yeah. actually, I, don't, I kind of relate to a little bit as well. Yeah. I can appreciate, especially jokes. Especially someone that's really good at joking, even if it burns deep. I, there's some appreciation about that. Oh, man. Creativity is a beautiful thing. There's a creativity. <laughs> so a in what thing. situation would it actually upset you if it's not a Duncan? When is someone an asshole and you're like, all right, it's enough? Never? There's got to be. That's a good question. No, th- first of all, no assholes are at Starbucks. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. No, at Dunkin'. That's why I know Dunkin Starbucks. Dunkin' Donuts is going to happen. Look, there's a lady at Walt, at, at uh, Whataburger. Uh, beautiful lady and she's older and I know when she's having a bad morning you know what I'm saying like like I can see it on her face yeah. I leave her alone she give me my cup we all good it's a beautiful thing <laughs> there's young kids that's up there in Whataburger sometimes they had a bad week had a bad weekend because because you know at Whataburger on, on the weekends that shit get crowded yeah. you know people come out of the club they up in there people are assholes coming out of the club Non-stop. they're all drunk and stuff Asking they tell for me, weird them stuff. Kids that's tell not me, even hey, on the menu you guys have wedding cake? Yeah, 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 right, right. Those <laughs> kids tell me their stories, and right? I understand that. They give me their cup, they vent. Like, I, I totally understand. Like, everyone has some stuff that they're going through. Like, I get yeah. that. I can't say that, you know. Now, if I'm at Walmart and somebody's being an asshole to me because I'm in the checkout line, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Like, I ain't doing that shit to you. I feel you like know? I'm way better at it as an adult, but I do remember a time in my life where the smallest things, and I'll give you an example. And I did, this is like back whenever I, I was training for MMA for a while, which creates an ego, mm-hmm. which if you're mature as an adult, you realize most of fighters are actually the coolest people in the world. But when you're young and you get into it and you've never been into it before that, it creates this weird ego. And there's a weird thing where like the smallest things that normally would make me laugh, which now make me laugh as an adult again, would just piss me off. And so we went to Walmart one day late. And this is the correct Walmart, by the way. I didn't mess it up with. Wada burger, Wada, 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 Wada. Like the world, Wada is like the world anti doping agency. Yeah, hey man, Wada burger. Those hey. guys make burgers now. <laughs> Wada burger. Hey so dude, they I was need at the start. I was at the. A- <laughs> they need, need to start. start. Yeah. I was at the actual Walmart late night, and um, I was with my brother, a couple friends, uh, and my wife, and who wasn't my wife at the time? She's my girlfriend, and we went through a long line. My brother bought so many groceries, mm-hmm. and he got through the whole thing. And it was like an older white dude with a long beard. He looked like Santa Claus. All white hair, mm-hmm. all white beard. Um, and he even had yellow in his beard. Like he had smoked a lot or like dipped and spit it. And it like whatever it was, <laughs> he had like the yellow thing going on in his beard. Okay. My brother bought all the groceries. He, he goes, oh, that'll be whatever the price is. My brother puts his card in, gets his receipt. And he goes, oh, you know what? Hey, I need to get some change. You think you could break a 20 for me? And that guy looks at my brother and he says, uh, uh, I can't uh, give you any change unless you buy something. And just, I just bought a hundred dollars worth of groceries. So see how calm you were when he said that? Yeah. That's probably what I should have done. And I just went, I literally looked at him. I must be like 19 or 20. And I was like, yo, why do you got to be an asshole, man? And he looked at me and maybe he might've been joking. I don't, to this day, I don't know, but he looked at me. I started the tension yeah. and he looks at me and he goes, it's fucking policy, man. And it's, this is like an older man, but I, I totally went off on him. Yeah, because you were an asshole saying saying what you said. Because, uh, yeah. Like you're it, 19, 20 years old. So so older Will understands. Right. And I would literally right. just tell him, like, hey, man, like, we just bought a bunch of stuff. You don't think you can break it? But I just went off, which caused him to go off. We get into a big scene. And this is how, like, this is how childish I was at the time. Security comes over. 
I realize everyone at Walmart is looking at me and it's later at night. So it's not a big crowd, but it's enough that we're like, I'm the focus of what's going on. Right. And then I realize in my stupid little brain that I'm the focus of everyone. And I'm like, how can I make this funny? So I literally like, I right. look at him and I go, fuck you, dad. Like I started, <laughs> That's I, a good one. I wanted everyone That's to think one. that he That's was my dad. One. Cause I'd already one. made That's a big a scene. One. That's a good one. And That's I just started one. yelling at him. I'm like, screw That's you pops. Like I just went off on him That's and they're like one. carrying me out. And I was like, you suck dad. I That's hate you. That's and then this guy's like, who is this kid yeah. yelling at me? That I've never met this kid in my life. And then everyone got the idea. Like they just let it go. Like, oh, it's just a guy and his dad. So I saved it. But I always think back and I'm like, how, how, that would never happen in this day. It's very hard to piss me off. Well, you're because, a grown man. Because even when someone says something like that, I'm like, I'll still call them out on it, but it's usually like in the same way. Like, what do man, you mean? I'm not this? calling anybody out, dude. I'm, I'm 52. When's the last time you've been in a fist fight? Um, Maybe. Do you remember losing a fight ever? I lost all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't I, mean lost all of them. I lost all of them. I lost all of them. I lost all of them. I'm, and I'm saying this humbly. I'm very, right. I'm very lucky to have won most of my fights, but I also fought for a while. So right. I, I also lucked out there, but I right. do remember you talking MMA. So you're, you're fighting like fighting, fighting. Well, the reason I did that is because I know what it's like to get beat up. Right. And, and it, there's no worse feeling in the world. It's so helpless. Like to literally like have another human being, even if they're the same size as you, if you're in high school or something, I got right. choked out by a kid. I could do nothing about it. Right. Like, there's right. moments like right. that where that's why I started doing fighting in the first place is because I'm like, I never want to be in a position where I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I, I don't remember just getting beat up. I remember fighting mm -hmm. and, and, and not winning the fight, whatever that means. But you're talking about fighting and defending yourself. So I don't think you lose when you're defending yourself. It's a good point. Not everyone has that, by the way, that little click in your brain. I think we have the, the freeze flight or fight thing. Mm -hmm. Most people freeze or flight. Right. The fighters are usually, those are the guys that usually feel like they know what they're doing anyways. But, but, but those are different are, people. Sure. Those are different people. Yes. Those are and, different people. And, I, I definitely wasn't one of those dudes. Definitely I was, one of those dudes. I went from, it's cause it was, I was telling you a story about how I got overly aggressive with the guy. Mm -hmm. I literally went through a phase where I started doing that and then it was exhausting. Like mm. I remember thinking how many people have I pissed off that, and we live in a small town. Right. When I go out, right. I now have to look for people that I pissed off. Half of them I probably don't know I pissed off because I was drinking. And then I go to meet people and I'm like, who, I have to, who's there? I have to do that when I text. Right. And I right. hated that. And I remember little by little, plus the guys at the gym I was training at were like, Will, you're an idiot. If you keep fighting, you can't come here anymore. Cause I was getting mm. in fights every week okay. coming into the gym bruise. And they're like, we didn't bruise you. See, you were here. See, that's a different level. See, that's a different level. When you ask me like, like I, I've gotten the verbal uh, altercations. Right. Right. I'm great at those. Like, I'm <laughs> you great are. At, I'm great I can, at those. I've never argued with you, but hey, I can man, tell I'm, I'm, I'm you great got some words, man. I'm, I'm, man, I'm great at those. Like I can, Hey man, I come from a mama that spit out them four letter words. Like it wasn't shit. So I'm good. But uh, as far as physical altercations, man, I haven't had those. I, I haven't had those in in decades, let alone years. Um, which is which is interesting, because when you're talking about coaching and you're talking about coaching in Las Cruces, you know, you have a lot of people that might disagree with you, and and so sometimes it becomes verbal. You know, I got in a verbal altercation with a high school coach. You know what I'm saying? Like so, at a different school, of course. Of course. And, and, and so, making sure you're not yelling at your assistant. Um, and no, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never do that. No, but, but, but sometimes that's part of the gig. Sure. And, and you deal with it and you, and you keep it pushing. But uh, as far as physical altercation, no, nah, man. I'm I think old, man. if the goal should always be to never have a physical altercation, as someone who just admitted to being in tons of them, I never felt good in the ones I won. And I definitely didn't feel good in the ones let that I lost. Let me ask you this one. Let me let me ask you, because if you're doing MMA, um, that means you're training. Sure. Right. So you're training to fight. Yes. Do you ever feel a certain way if you go out to a bar, you go out to a club, whatever it is, and it becomes an altercation, and you're fighting with a person who who's not a trained fighter? Mm -hmm. Don't you? And, and and let's say you beat the crap out of them. Do you feel bad? Or, or, or better yet, before that altercation happens and before it becomes physical, 
do you ever feel compelled to not let it go to that next step because you have trained? Yes. And I learned, um, again, you got versions of me young, like a 19, that story took place mm-hmm. once I at 2021, which is right about the end. I start, I think I stopped fighting around 22. Yes. You do get to that point and a great person. This is actually a funny story. I don't even think he knows this story. Mm-hmm. Um, but, a. a the person that I noticed this the most with was Austin Trout. Mm. And he was friends with Patrick Nieto, who was my mm. foster brother. And a friend of those two stole my brother's motorcycle. Like, just robbed mm. it. Took it off. So, again, training, feeling crazy. I tell my brother, we're going to find out who did it. We're going to beat him up. Da, da, da. We find out who it is. My brother tells him. He busts him and says, hey, man, this is a friend of his. Bring me my motorcycle and nothing will happen. We meet at a Sonic. And he shows up with the motorcycle to give it back after mm-hmm. he stole it. He shows up with Patrick, who's my foster brother, and Austin Trout, who at the time, he, he had just won the world title in Mexico. This is before mm. he fought Cotto. So okay. he, was, he was very, very known in New Mexico. Right. And I knew his name, did not know his face. Um, but this is before he hit like his peak, peak, peak. Mm-hmm. And uh, he went to Mayfield. So my brother knew him. I didn't know that. So I get to this place and we're at Sonic and uh, the friend walks out and says, hey, man, sorry, I stole your motorcycle. I was like, dude, you can give the best apology in the world. I'm still beating you up. You stole my brother's motorcycle. You're a thief. I got to set an example for everyone here. that You can't be stealing people's stuff. And I got really aggressive with him. And Austin Trout stepped in and he he, he was. And keep in mind, I don't quite know who he is. I don't even know his name yet. Right. He steps in and he's smaller than me, shorter than me, I should say. Super great shape. Mm hmm. And uh, he just kind of, not hard, but just, hey, man, you, you, you have every right to be upset. He was super calm with me. You have every right to be upset. But he did bring the bike back. He's my friend. I can't let you beat him up. Blah, blah, blah. And I remember looking at him, and I was like, fuck you too, man. Like, you want to get it? We can get it. And it was the arrogance thing in me. And did I you saw, fight him? Did you fight him? I see everyone's eyes. Hold on real quick. I see everyone's eyes. First of all, I see their eyes because my people are behind me. Mm-hmm. So I see their eyes, and they're all just like, they had this look like, does he know he's talking to me right now? And I didn't get it. And I just thought, like, these are just the friends that are hyping up their boy. Let me ask you, how many people you had behind you? Uh, I think it was close to five to seven on both sides. And how many? Okay, five on to both seven sides. on both sides. On both pretty, sides. Pretty okay. even. Pretty so, even. So you're squared up with Austin? No. Well, I wouldn't even call it squared up. I'm squared up with him, the guy that stole the bike. And Austin's trying to stop the fight from happening. And when he stops out of, like, just arrogance, I'm like, fuck you too, man. And so, and he, I remember like seeing everyone and I'm like, whatever, like you can get it too. And, uh, he, he knew now that I'm older, looking back, he, he, <laughs> and he never, he never like was like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to teach this guy a lesson. He right. was so, I think at one point he literally looked at me and said, like, all right, dude, like you can beat me up. Like, what do you want? Like, we're, we're all going to leave. Like you got your bike back. You're going, I think part of him understood that that dude shouldn't have stole the bike either. And so, but he was so humble. And I remember I was so aggressive with him. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you want to get it? We can get it. Nothing happened. We get in the car and everyone, and then Patrick, who was my foster brother, was on Austin's side. Mm-hmm. And I saw him looking at me weird, just like, bro, do you know you're talking right. to you? And so I thought that was weird too. And I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll go out on a hunch and I'll just get in this car. And I left. I left it alone. And everyone in the car is like, do you have any idea who that is? Right. And I was like, some dude I was about to beat up. You know what I mean? Just like right. arrogant. Right. And they go, that's Austin Trout. And I knew the name and I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, what, what was right. he going to do? He right. boxes. I'm like, I train MMA. What's good? And then I think a couple of days later, I was at a bar and they were playing Austin Trout's fight uh, when he won the Mexico world title. Mm. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Right. Like, thank God I didn't fight that guy. He was amazing. Right. And I, I, but I always, to go to your point, I remember how humble and kind he was. He knew the whole time I could drop this guy in one move. This is a dumb younger kid who's drunk and acting crazy, but he respected me because he knew that, that dude shouldn't have stole his bike, but he also knew that he shouldn't. And I remembered that later on. So remember I told you a few days later, right. and I remember thinking, I'm that guy that's trying to, and I didn't even win every fight, and I was the aggressive right. guy. And I remember thinking, like, you know what? I want to really take this seriously. And I, I became way more humble, and I always remembered him for that. Like, just yeah. setting a good example you for, know, for people. For Austin to do something like that shows the level of comfort he has in himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he could have been like, you know what? Let me, let me jack this dude up and, and let him show me, let, let, let me show him where I'm coming from. He could have, he yeah. could have easily did that, but that shows how, how comfortable he is with himself. 
And that perfectly answers your question mm-hmm. to yes. Once you, w- what it was is I wasn't very good at first, but I got enough to feel good. Once I got good and realized like the technique and stuff, you start feeling confident in yourself. That's what it was. I was, I was overcompensating. I want to be so scary that no one's going to want to fight me. Mm-hmm. And I happened to do it on a day where the, one of the scariest fighters in the world right. like was just there. So, and so, so, so let me ask you this one. So sure. now you're 32 years old. You go to a bar and someone's talking shit to you. How do you handle that now at 32 opposed to being 19 or 20? I am so much more about having the best night. I would totally walk away. And I don't even feel like it's a bitch move or anything weird. There's there's few exceptions. You insult my wife or you physically assault someone I'm with, then maybe there's a different thing there, which people don't normally do. Usually you can tell when someone's about to do stuff like that. You can get away. I don't even care anymore. I'm gone. Like, okay. Okay. So I, I go out way. to have fun, someone to have insults, conversations like someone this. Someone insults your wife. Oof. Someone insults your wife. Are you are you cool enough with you? So someone has insulted my wife, by the way. And, okay. And I'm so proud of myself. Once I even told my, I and she knows how I used to be too. Okay. And so it's like insults. I will a hundred percent tell you something, and I'll check you. That ego part of me still exists, and I'll go, "Hey, man, what are you like? Are you dumb? Like you think you're gonna say that in front of my no, wife?" No, 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 no. no. That, that that's cool. I'm talking I'm saying about the I'll, physical physicality part. I think it would. I don't even know what I have to prove. So even that, usually people will back off. But you're saying if someone still does it, yeah, I think it would have to become physical before I did something. You, you would get physical. I oh, hundred percent. Wow. I don't. I don't think I have it in me to start the physicality anymore. Which back in the day, I remember thinking I'm going to get physical first because that gives me the advantage because they're right. going to get physical on me. That was always my headset. I don't think I would do it. I just like, I don't know what that person's going through. A lot of the people that I'm telling you about like have apologized to me later on. Like this guy that stole my brother's motorcycle is still around. I don't trust him. A thief's a thief. Right. But he's nice. I see him when I go out. But but you're you're 32 years old. Mm -hmm. You're at the rave. Sure. Right. Uh, Someone insults your wife. Right. Do you initiate the physicality? No, I don't. You don't? No. Okay. So so that shows how cool you are with you. Yeah, I think so. That's all right. I just That's all right. I have better fights to pick than that. If if I'm exactly. going to get physical, exactly. I would like it to be for a really really for a really reason. good reason. Now, somebody put their hands on your wife that 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 that, that don't that doesn't involve any kind any type of conversation. Yes. So that's like a, just a no-go. Like that's a, that's I said that's a no-go. That's think, a no-go. I, I don't even think I would think about it. That's the issue. Is I think I would just react and then afterwards right. like god damn it, like I beat the crap out of this guy or even if I lose it, I don't know. I don't even distinguish that. Right. Sometimes there's dudes that are way bigger than me. Like clearly with Austin Trout, like that's a better fighter. My brain doesn't register. This could be another fighter. It just registers dude I need to take out. Right. So if it ever went to that place with a, with a wife or if I have kids one day, a kid, I'd probably win yeah, or but, lose. But I'm going to do it. You're 19, 20 years old, Austin Trout. You're full of nothing but, but testosterone. You're ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah, you don't, you don't yeah. give a shit. Like Austin Trout, who the fuck is that? Right. Not knowing that he's a professional at his field. You and know he what I'm acted saying? like a professional too. And that's and 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 that's because he's cool with who he is. Yeah. So you know exactly I mean? to your point. Yeah. He's cool with who he is. I, cool with he, if I never get into a fight for the rest of my life, I think that's a huge win for me. Like if I never have to do that. I mean, you know, like, I, and I'm trying to find a better place. You know, just being a coach because you get into confrontations and 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 things are said and actions. You no, know, you, you know, we ain't gonna fight or no shit like that. But but just. How we conduct ourselves, you know, in, in, in being in a cooler place is very important. You know, being in a cooler place is very important. So and I learned a lot about myself from this year of coaching. Like, I've been, you know, this is my 13th year as a head coach. I've learned a lot about who I am as a head coach and where I want to be as a person through this thing of coaching. So, so it's, been, it's, been, it's been wild, man. It's been wild. I remember you as one of the guys. Like, and I'm trying to remember, like, because you were younger back then. Right. And you weren't my coach, but you were a coach. I know we always talk about that because it's, it's kind of crazy that it's like you weren't the varsity coach, but you were. To me, it was you and Smith always. That's how I remembered it. Right. Like, it, it didn't matter. Like, he helped you with JV. You helped him with varsity. And clearly, you took over after that. But I, I remember you was always, like, he was the. Well, I won't even get into him. I'll get into you. You were always like one of the guys, but like the best role model as one of the guys, even though you clearly weren't a kid like we all were. 
but you were the guy that would actually suit up and play. I remember that. Coach Smith never I played once. Enough. I was young enough. Never I once. was young enough. I was young enough. I was young enough. You don't do that fun. anymore? Hell no. I love that you did that, by the way. Because hey, it was like, I, we were I tried all, it a couple of times, but. It, do it, it again. It's not, it's not worth seeing. Do you think you could still like get someone? No. Like on a move or something? No? No. Because that was my favorite part when you would do it. Because everyone, everyone's eyes would light up. Yeah, but I was young. And we would all play what way year better. Was that? What, year was, what year was that? Tell so, me a year. I can tell you my age. So I graduated 08. I'm, I was at Cruces 04. And I played uh, freshman year at Cruces. So 04, 05. 04, 05? I'm still in shape. 0405, sure I'm still too. in shape. 0405, I can still play. Yeah, I guarantee you, I'm telling you from the perspective. Stop lying. Not even, <laughs> even stop lying. Even if you don't do good, if you lace them up and told them you're gonna play, look at the look at their faces. Will they will have the same eyes that we had when we were, when I was younger? Will my son just graduated? Well, tell him to go back and do do will, it. Will I tried to play with him? It's not happening. But the fear of you might. And it's then, like, like pretend that you got a call or something and don't do it. It's not happening. But just, just to see their faces. Will. Lace them up once. It's not happening. Just once, man. Will. <laughs> it's not happening. I tried it with Deuce, and it's not happening. Maybe because it's Deuce, it's not happening. We'll leave it with this because we're getting close to the end. Okay. Can you see a scenario in the future? You can answer however you want. Right. Can you see a scenario in the future where Deuce takes over your job? As a coach? No. You don't think he'd be a good coach? No. How tall is he, by the way? He's about 6'1". Why does he look so bigger? Because I saw that on his, uh, I saw his max Cause prep Because he's, he's long. He's long and he's athletic and he can jump. And he, and he, he, when I say he can jump. Is he lying? Is he taller than 6'1"? No, nah, he gets over the rim. He feels taller than 6'1". I've seen him play. He feels well, he, he's, taller he's, than he's, he's long. So, so. So he's he's he I'm has six, long arms. I'm he six has, one or six two. You think he's taller than me? No. If you're six two, he's not taller than me. I think. Well, I was six two in high school. Unless I'm getting shorter, I'm still six no, two. No, no, no. He, you're you're he, probably taller. Than, but he he's feels athletic. he feels taller than me. Like when but I he, see him he, play, he's proportionate. You know, like he has long arms. Uh, his, you know, he has long legs. Deuce has the legs of a football player. You know what I mean? So he's athletic. So, so so yeah, and he's very athletic. So he's very athletic. So. So when you look at him or if you see him, he's he's proportionate um, uh, and, and he's very athletic, like you said. So, so, nah. so he's a point guard or what is he playing? I think he's a point guard. You know, Deuce is uh, shit. He's by far better, better ball player than me. And that's how it should be. Um, what did you play when you played? What position? I was a point guard. I was a point guard, but I had to learn how to play the two position because of uh, <laughs> A cat by the name of Randy Brown came in, and he he's a fucking pro. So you have to learn you if you want to get out there on the court, you better find another position for yourself. Got gotcha. you. You know, so so, um, uh, Deuce is very very athletic, um, and, but he's skilled at the same time, and and uh, so it's a, uh, you know, it's it's an interesting day. You know, it's it's tough. I I had an opportunity, and 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 I don't want to cut us. No, no, I don't no, want to no. go too far. Mm -hmm. um, but I had the opportunity last week. Um, one of my former players, Joseph Garza, who played for the Aggies as well. Uh, it, it was his birthday, and I got to go to his house and celebrate his birthday um, with his parents. And and uh, talk about a kid with a work ethic. Talk about a kid with a work ethic. And he's a mentor to Deuce, and he's a mentor to Deuce. So 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 it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But I got to talk to his parents, and 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 they, uh, you know, we got to talk about Deuce. And and they're so proud of Deuce because just like you said, you know, he's a little kid that was pushing the ball. You know what I'm saying? So so they got to see Deuce from you know, just like you got to see Deuce. Yeah. You know, from from a little itty bitty kid. And 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 they were saying how there's a lot of pressure on him. And I'm like, man, there's no pressure on him. It was like, no, there's a lot of pressure on him because every time before they say Deuce's name, they say mine. Sure. Former Aggie, da 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 da, da and all that stuff. And and and, and I'm in the Hall of Fame now. All that bull crap, right? You know, all they're going to bring that up every time, by the way. Every time, including the announcers, they're they're going to bring it up at every game, every time. And I didn't, I didn't realize that. I, I, I really didn't realize that. They pulled my coat to that, which, 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 which I love them for doing that. And and so, looking at Deuce, and I tell him all the time, dude, you're by far a better ball player than me. Like, like I have no problem saying that, and you should be because you you were able to. 
to learn and 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 be around and I was able to put you in an environment uh, an environment of basketball to where you had the opportunity to learn and and uh so when we start talking about this basketball thing dude man I'm sitting to the back I'm trying to I'm trying my best to sit to the back and let you do you and and uh and trying to figure this thing out it's it's an incredible thing because for me to be talking about my son going to the same school that I went to man it's like he like, looks like you, like it's dude. It gives me goosebumps, man. It gives me goosebumps, you know. So, 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 uh, incredibly proud. And but at the same time, I'm so fortunate to have a for him to have a network of people that he can uh, talk and he, to. And a large part of that network, you had a huge hand in because a lot well, of these guys you're talking about, they're all former players. They're all former players or people I that know you, you like Joseph Garza. Uh, uh, shoot, man! Every you know, uh, Sean Gover, um, man, it's just it's just a, a a group of people that I've been able to associate with that seen Deuce since he was, you know, shoot, Sean Gover was there when he was born, you know, which is crazy. You and know? these are all people that like and enjoy you, regardless of what version you were throughout you coaching them. Man, I've been a good version. What you saying, Will? I think you've been a great version. I've been a good version. I'm just I'm, saying. I've had my moments, but I'm I've been a good version. If, and I don't know this, <laughs> but I'm saying if, if there's former players or current players that play for you that wonder, this is the example. Hey, I got former players that hate my ass, and and that's all good, and that and that's all good, man. But but the majority of players that played for me, they know where I'm coming from, and and they love me, man. I got, and I can go down a line of cats. That love me, and I can go down the cats, go down the line of cats that hate me. But that line of cats that love me is going to always be longer. For sure, I think it's For already sure. longer. For sure, I don't know if it's all. I don't, I don't know if it's already <laughs> longer. But but uh, but 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 I know it's longer. But I know it's longer, man. And 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 it's an ing- man. I've had an incredible experience, like coaching my kid, coaching my son for four years. This shit has been incredible. It's been and he was good. Shit. Like some some people have to coach your kid and they're not good, <laughs> dude. It, you know you know what's funny and, and and I don't know if we have enough time, but a, a crazy story. Deuce freshman year, he wanted to. His goal was to play varsity his freshman year, and I was like, okay, but if you can't guard nobody, you're not playing varsity. And I said, dude, I love you. You're my dude. You're my guy. I love you, but if you're playing JV, there won't be any film sessions, and I'll only be watching your games the second half before I get ready for the varsity. Like that's real. Like that's real. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so he was like, he was looking at me like, damn. I was like, I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah. Like, if you're playing JV your freshman year, we're not watching any film. I don't have to watch any film. I only watch film on the varsity. Yeah. I only watch film on the varsity. You would be taken away from the varsity guys. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, so, so if you want to play varsity, you better be able to stay in front of whoever I have you guarding, right? And you know, you're gonna shoot bad shots, good shots, all that shit. Everybody does that. But you better be able to defend if you want to play varsity and understand that if you play JV, I still love you, but we're not watching film. I'm not watching film on JV. I'm not watching film on JV. So understand that. Understand that. And he was like, damn. I was like, well, I'm just telling you the truth. Fair enough. So so if you play JV, because Deuce would have averaged 30 on JV easy. Did he ever play JV? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Deuce made, you know, he averaged 12 points a game on varsity. His freshman year coming off the bench. I'm telling you, man, you skipped a whole bunch of arguments. Because if if Deuce acted up and had bad games and was not good, they would have they would have gave you some. You're the fa- you're favoring your son. You, Will, you don't so, think that happened? You oh, don't think that happened? But at least you got to confidently know, even if you didn't say it to these people. Like he was killing. He was killing as a freshman. Will he? Deuce had five games as a freshman where he scored over 20 points or more. The next time you see Deuce say thank you for not sucking as a freshman, you save me so many stupid <laughs> arguments, so many stupid arguments about hey. why I put my son in for 30 minutes hey. and he scored one point. What's so beautiful, Will. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, what's so beautiful, what's so beautiful, and, and, and I finally got a chance to grasp it, is dude, for the past two years, his junior and senior year, Deuce was the best basketball player in the whole state of New Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's all I kept hearing about, yeah. dude. Like stat wise, eye wise, that he met the eye test, like all that. Like I was so, so fortunate and so, and so grateful, you know. And he doesn't understand that because I didn't get a chance to really um, 
watch it. I didn't get a chance to really watch it. Uh, but, you know, for him to receive individual awards, whether it's Max Preps, whether it's Gatorade or whatever, you know, and 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 like I told him, dude, we we lost two games in two years, and both of those games were at the state championship tournament. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and and, and the last thing I wanted him to feel uh, was bad about losing in the state championship. Like, like I understand it hurts and stuff like that, but I don't want you to feel bad about who you are for mm-hmm. losing that game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. You know, which, which, which was, which was amazing. It was an amazing experience, like a totally amazing experience. Not only as a coach, I didn't get a chance to sit up in the stands as a father and just like soak that shit in and be like, that's my son. And like talk shit. You're going to have like, so much fun doing that with him at NMSU. Cause you're hey, right. I Man. haven't had a chance. Like, I don't know how to act. Enjoy it, by the way. Well, hang out with Pee Wee. He'll show you how to act. Again. Hey, man, I want to get he with might, Pee Wee. He might even get you banned from a few. Hey, if, if, <laughs> if Pee Wee, you know, the great thing about Pee Wee, Pee Wee will sit behind the, the opposing team's bench, like maybe four rows, and he's in their ass. Oh. Hey, if I can be that black guy next to him and, <laughs> and, 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 and talk. Pee Wee got a lot of heart. I don't know if I have that type of heart at my age. He'll he'll inspire you though. What, you think so? Yeah, yeah. You Just think be so? next to him. Should, should, should I be next to him? You, should. you know what? You should. One game. Hey, Pee Wee. One game. One game. One game. Opposing teams bench four rows back. I'm standing with you, and I'm gonna be a fool. Let's just let's just let's just see what they say. I hope he calls you up on that. <laughs> let's just see what they say. You get to do whatever you want because you, hey, you're right. You were the coach of that that whole thing, and now you get to be a fan and a father from the stands. Man, that's gonna be awesome. Hey, I I hope so. I haven't, uh, dude. I haven't done that shit. Like like I'm nervous. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I don't want to be that dude. You know what I mean. You should be that dude. Let someone correct you for the first time in your life. Like be the guy that's like, wait, am I acting crazy? You know what I mean? Am I am I doing the weird stuff? Because you've always been the level headed. Like I gotta because I'm you're, I'm the coach. But but can I get away with it? Ah, uh, when you hang out with Pee Wee, he's for sure gonna go down before you do. So that's a good. Uh, no no, but <laughs> but if I'm with Pee Wee, I'm with Pee Wee. If we going down, we both go. Hey, fair enough. He's Mexican. I'm black. We're going down. Fair enough. We're going down. <laughs> they, 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 Fine, like, then I'll go with go, you. We'll they, get they, out of it. Hey, but you might get away. <laughs> you <laughs> might get away. You might get away. Hey, if Pee Wee goes down, they're gonna be like, hey, he was with him. They go, hey, bring him too. No. Now you, they'd be like, you'd be like, hey, I wasn't with him. They'd be like, uh, I'd be like, I swear, officer, I know these fellas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they'd be like, you know, but how do you know him? And then they'll question you. Be like, well, you know, he coaches at Las Cruces High School. Pee a hardworking uh, person in the community. You know, you know, they're they're both two uh, outstanding guys who who I've been associated and with. And they'll be like, you're right, you're, I, right I, I "You're right, sir. You're right, sir. You're right, sir. You know what? You know what? Let him go." Uh, Mr. Palmer said that they're okay. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Palmer said they're okay. Let them go. You know, <laughs> yo, you guys can't stay for this game, but but we're gonna let you go. You know, because Mr. Palmer said so. You know, like like I haven't had an opportunity to just be that dude in the stands. Like I think like, you should enjoy it. You'll know when the moment's there. You're like this. This is my moment. I I, I want that moment. I haven't had that moment. And you I haven't will. had that moment. Let me let me leave you with this because we do have to end it. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I want you and say whatever you want. We had, uh, and this is the, the most wonderful way I can think of wrapping it up. Okay. I had talked to you earlier. We had wonderful conversations, by the way. I appreciate everything you put into this. We had talked a little bit about how to capture um, that compassion, kindness, love, memory mm. um, that we get when someone passes away while we're still alive. And I always think it reminded me of this. And I think this is a great way to, of ending it. That's kind of why I do the podcast is I think that I don't have kids at all. But one day mm-hmm. when technology is so crazy and it's so advanced, my kids will have these podcasts to look back at. And they'll be like, I don't know what dad would have done this situation, but I can tell who he is as a man because I heard him say this. I feel like he said that. I feel like mm-hmm. this was his intention. Um, so let me ask you this and we'll end it with this. Okay. And not to take it to a dark place, but let's say this was because we talked earlier about treating someone like it's their last day ever. Mm. Play out a scenario today where yours is. And your son, daughters, whoever, family members get to hear this. Who who is William Benjamin? Not just Coach Benji, not uh not anyone else, not you know, just 
Who wow. is William Benjamin and how do you want to lead this? If this was the last way to get to know you, what would you want people to know about you? Man, I would want my kids to know that everything I've done and everything I've done, everything I did is for them. Um, who's close to Benjamin? Someone who works hard, someone who's compassionate about what he does, whether it's in the educational setting or whether it's in the basketball setting. Um, well, I would want to let my family know that I love them to death especially when you're talking about my three kids. Um, man, I would want to let my friends know that uh, I love them just as much. Um, man, man, that's a good-ass question, Will. That's a good-ass question. Um, I would like to, shoot, I would, I would probably let, shoot, would want people to know that I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I make mistakes. Um, I wish I could walk in, uh, walk into places smiling more. You Maybe know, you might to, now to, to to make people feel more comfortable about who they are. Um, but uh, I don't think at this stage I got that in me. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I got that in me. I won't be mad if you never but, do. But but at the same time, man. But at the same time, I think I'm a good dude. Um, and uh, uh. Friend wise, family wise, I'm always there for them uh, if they reach out to me. Uh, but but if if I had to ask my if I had to tell my kids about who I was, somebody that loved them very much, and that and that uh, I'm more understanding and more patient about the mistakes that they may make in their youth. You know, so I don't think. Yeah, that's a good ass question, Will. And that How was you a, messing with me, and like that was a good ass answer. You ain't messing with me like that, man. I can tell, I man. I can't be coming on this goddamn podcast. I'm just saying, man. This is cool. This is cool. Hey, man, I, I really love the fact that you brought me on here because I really feel like this is very authentic and very organic. Yeah. This is some good. This is We, like, did, we didn't like play this any of this. This ain't, this ain't all, you know, bling, bling, shine, shine. Like it's more substance than it is than it is shine. And, 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 and. I really appreciate that. I really I appreciate, appreciate you that. coming on, man. I think both times we had great conversations. Um, I, I agree. Think this with one you. was better. Yeah. yeah, this one was better. Ooh, Ooh, can you imagine better. that third one? Oh, shit, <laughs> Let's not hey, wait a year next hey, time, man. man. We're gonna be going in on the water burger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably gonna be <laughs> one of those viral clips when I put hey, it out. There. Okay, quick question. Sure. Name the f- best five burgers in town or ever. Ever. Water burgers one for me. So I agreed with you there. In any order. In any order. In okay. Any order. Water burger would be one, but sure, I'll go no order after that. Uh, burger Nook, I like them. There are many burgers. Um, I really, I'm trying to, does it have to be fast food chains or just could it be local stuff that no one? Any five burgers. Okay. Any five burgers. So I got Water Burger, I got Burger Nook. I'm going to go with, um, oh, man, I hate that you asked me this. I'm going to go, there's a weirdly good burger I like at Ruby Tuesday. I know that's not a popular okay. one. Okay. I'm going to go with that one. Um, I like the burger. The game makes a good burger. Game yeah, makes a good burger. And uh, I know there's going to be one I regret not mentioning, but my number five will probably have to be. Damn it. I don't know this one. I got your ass not talking. I know. I got Jesus Christ, man. I got your ass not talking. I'm going to go with Wendy's because it pops up because I like that Baconator See, one. I was thinking Wendy's too, but are you going to put Wendy's over In-N-Out? I don't think. I've had In-N-Out twice in my life, and it wasn't special. You don't like In-N-Out burgers. You don't like them. Are they going to hate me for saying that? No. So, I don't hate you for saying that. So it'd be in your top you five. I would put So Wendy's. give me yours. Give me yours real quick. Honestly, in no order. In okay. no order. Whataburger's in there, top five. I don't know what order. Whataburger's there. I think Wendy's is right up there. I think Wendy's is right up there um, with, with any top five. I burger. don't know if their no frozen patty thing is real or not, but it feels like it's real when you eat there. They could be lying to us. I don't know about the no frozen. I don't know. It's the first it. thing I think of when I eat it. When I they bet put, this is not frozen. When they put it in the bag, <laughs> I don't care. That could be kangaroo meat. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So, so we got so Whataburger. We got Wendy's. Whataburger. We got Wendy's in no order. Okay. I think in and out is a good burger. Okay. I think it's a good burger. Three. One person that you left out was Sonic. I think that's a good burger. Oh, that is a good burger. I think that's a good Who burger. Who would I have to boot out, though? You'd have to burger, You would have to boot out one of the locals. 
Like you'd have to burk out. You would have to boot only out because they have other stuff there that's better. They have a good Philly and they have good wings. Yeah, they do. Okay, uh, okay. I, I, I boot I, out. I think Sonic is a good burger, and I'm just staying fast. Food. I'm just staying fast. See, food. I knew there'd be one that I forgot. Yeah, that see, is a good but, burger. See, but I'm, but I'm, but okay. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the five brothers. I'm gonna throw in the brothers. The five guys. The five guys. I'm gonna throw in the brothers. I'm I don't get the, the hype guys. there, man. Is it pretty good? good? They're okay. Again, I ate there once. It's and, okay. And I it was brought to me. I didn't get it fresh. It was, I sold cars and a guy brought me one. It's probably okay. late. It, ain't, I don't it like, ain't called the five brothers. It's called the five guys. It could be the five brothers. I'm calling it you the just, five brothers. I'm calling it the five brothers. That's the only reason why I threw it in there. I'm calling it the brothers. I'm throwing the brothers I, in there. I, I will hop God on that damn trip. it, I put them in number one. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I'm putting we'll, them in number we'll one. Go Cinco Brothers. The Cinco, Cinco Brothers. brothers. We'll Cinco mix it up. Brothers. We're mixing it up. But but you left out Sonic. I think Sonic is a good burger. So you're one short. That's four. That's five with the brothers. No, no. You mentioned it. Five guys. You said Water Burger. Water Burger. You yeah. said Sonic, and then you said Five Guys. And I said Wendy's. Oh no, I said Five Guys twice, and then you said Wendy's. So I Five Guys, Wendy's. Sonic, and Water said- Burger, Wendy's. You're missing one. You said four. No, 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 no. Give I me said, the fifth. I said, I said okay, okay. Well, let me go down my line. I said Whataburger, no order. I said Sonic. I said Wendy's. I said the brothers. And then I said the uh, the fifth one was um. There was no fifth one. The last no, one we ended. Fifth one. You said them in order. You have a better memory than me. You're missing no, a fifth no, one. No, 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 no. I said I said the Wendy's and and then In and Out. In and Out is the top. five Oh, burger. that was the first one you mentioned. Yeah, In and Out is the top five burger. Okay. You don't think so? Their fries taste like rope. Like, it's terrible. Their french fries are terrible. So let's switch it real quick. What about fries? Only fries. If we're going only fries, McDonald's going has yeah. to be top five. <laughs> McDonald's has to be I top five. I think they're five. one. Because they even to. healthy people are like, yeah, if I'm going to eat bad, I'm going to get McDonald's. you got to have McDonald's fries. They they I mean, they, they just put just the, just the right amount of salt and For those of you listening, oil on there. <laughs> put your favorite burgers in the comments or fries, and we'll listen to them. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Coach Hell Benji, yeah. my guy, it's been an honor, man. Thank man. you for hanging out. Thank you. Thank you very Talk much. Talk it up. We are out. Thank you. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Was that-